I want you to please make welcome with me, uh, Pastor Ola Kunle Shoreo, an unusual gift of God to this generation as he blesses us today. Come on, make him welcome. Make him welcome. Make him welcome. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. If you're excited to be here this morning, I want to just give the Lord a clap offering and celebrate this moment. Amen. It's always pure joy, um, great privilege, big honor in my heart. Every, every time I have the opportunity to stand here in the Elevation Church to speak to God's, God's mind, to God's people. Um, I don't take it for granted. I honor this house so much. I honor all that God is doing, the vision, the ideas, the spiritual activities, exercises, everything just speaks to all that I represent and that I want to represent. I find it honorable, pleasurable, encouraging, inspiring um, to be part of this house, and I know that is your own experience as well. Amen. Am I correct? Uh, PG, Pastor Bola, I really want to celebrate you. You are two amazing people, um, and I mean that. Um, this is not my first time here, so I won't bore you with my usual rhetoric. You know, um, I'm just going to save you that torture. But the truth is that, you know, I don't flatter anyone. I really do, really do find um, um, Pastor Bola and PG extremely inspiring, great leaders. And it's a pleasure to be your friend, to be associated with you, um, to draw inspiration from you. I really celebrate you, and I congratulate the house for enjoying such blessing of leadership. Um, the pastors in the house, I know you all, Pastor Debo and all the leaders, all the workers, the choir, man, that was beautiful. Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you all. I have some products here, as usual. They are very expensive, no apologies. God bless you, you can't afford them. Don't ask for discounts, just pray that God will enlarge your cost to be able to afford them. If you can't pay for it, it's not your time. Don't get worried, we won't reduce the price. Uh, this is 25 CDs, my trophy pack. Um, is 120,000 bucks. Um, so you won't bring 120K to church, but you brought your card. So just go there, swipe it, the product comes to you, and we get the money. See, it works. I have two CDs here. The miracle of God's hand, the secret to weighty wealth and good success. Get it? It's going to change your life as well. It's a message that I shared in a church in Dallas. Walking in newness, how to key into new beginnings. Both of them will change you. We sell them for 30,000 naira. You can't buy one. You have to buy the two. We don't have enough. We came with very few, so I'm sure it will be exhausted real quick. So go there, take your card in, and get them. So if you want to get everything, though, that is 150,000 bucks. But for today, getting everything will just be 100,000 naira. Rejoice, rejoice. Celebrate it. Rejoice. You know, don't beef. Right? Just 100K, and, and, and you got it sorted out. I'm going to read some scripture, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to build on everything that we did in the first session, right? The first service. Okay? I'm going to be speaking um, beyond that. So if you are in the second service, please get the message of the first service. It's distinct on its own, but it will help you to deepen and key into what we are going to talk about here. So go out of your way to get the message of the second of the first service. Okay, please. Open your Bibles very quickly to Ezekiel in chapter 11. Ezekiel in chapter 11. Ezekiel, man. Chapter 11 from verse 1. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward. And there at the door of the gate were 25 men. I recognized some of them, among whom I saw Jazaniah, the son of Azor. I also saw uh, Palatia, the son of Bedaniah, princes of the people. And he said to me, son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in this city, who say the time is not near to build houses. This city is the cauldron, and we are the meat. Therefore, prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. I want to read scripture in the message 
translation. It's very important that I read this in the message translation. So, um, message Bible. Then the Spirit picked me up and took me to the gate of the temple that faces east. There were 25 men standing at the gate. I recognized the leaders, Jezaniah, the son of Azor, Palashia, son of Benaniah. God said, son of man, these are the men who draw up blueprints for sin. These are the men who draw up blueprints for sin, who think up new programs for evil in this city. You see what I'm saying? See, this is, a, this, is a, this is a great job. These are not ordinary guys. 25 men. In, in, and they say what they are doing. Can you imagine their job description? They design blueprints for sin. So all these same things you are seeing, none of them is coincidental. These are agendas. People are sitting down to curate your experiences. Power centers across the globe. I mean, you will almost think this is not in the Bible, right? The scripture said, these are men who draw up blueprints for sin, who think up new programs for evil in this city. They say, we can make anything happen here. We can make anything happen here. We are the best. We are the choice pieces of meat in the soup pot. And God said, oppose them, son of man, preach against them. Tell your neighbor, oppose them. Oppose them. Preach against them. Preach against them. I'm coming to you, man. So let me pause there. Let's go to Revelations real quick. Revelations in chapter 9. Whew. Revelations 9. I'm reading verse... Oh, let me leave the message Bible. New KJV. From verse 3. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass. Talk about global warming. Not to harm the grass um, of the earth or any green thing or tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Amen. The last one is the book of Genesis. You know the story already, so I won't bother because of time. I'm saving time. Where the Bible was describing the garden, the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are we together? The serpent and all of that. All of us know that story, right? If you don't know it, we need to help you. Right? That's a common story, kindergarten. So let's go forward from there. Jesus, this is yours. This is your moment. Use it to your glory. Transform us. Thank you for shifts. Thank you for precision in the spirit. Thank you for clarity and understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for power. Thank you for the supernatural. Thank you for capacity. Thank you for newness. Thank you for all that you are going to do here today. We place a demand on the grace of God upon this house. We put a demand on the grace of God upon the servants. We place a demand on the grace of God upon my life. And I agree with everyone in this house for shift. Shift from point A to point B. Amen. Whatever those points are for everyone. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For those in this room, for those not in this room, for those who will listen to this work days after now, years after now, we declare the timelessness of this understanding. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have declared and so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. We welcome all those who are online and different um, of the ex different expressions, um, Life Point, um, Greater Lekki, Ikoi, Victoria Island, Ikeja, Ikorodu, London, Canada. Thank you all for locking in. God bless you. God increase you. God cause His face to shine upon you. Grants you usable peace in Jesus' name.
I will now come down. So, amen. Whether you like it or not, the world is run, managed by agendas. There are power centers across the world curating, architecting their own programs. There's nothing you will ever know on the face of the earth that is coincidence. There's always forces behind everything you see. Things are not just happening. Why do you think young people across the world all look the same way? Because there is a design from Hollywood, from between the movies, the musical videos, right there between entertainment, between the media, there is a subtle, subliminal suggestion as to how every young person should dress. Nobody came at any point in time and said, look, from today you will be sagging, young man. Young men everywhere, this is how to sag, dress this way. Nobody did that. Nobody told them to dress. They just made sure some people dress that way and everybody would dress that way. That's the way you have to make your hair. Your mother didn't make her hair like that. Nobody in your lineage ever made their hair like that. But you are going to make your own hair like that. Just because something is... I'm not saying it's wrong. Please continue to make your hair like that. I'm not, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just telling you it didn't just happen. People designed that this is how you are going. Have you noticed that People are dressing more and more naked and exposing themselves. That's future of fashion. People are sitting down to des design how you will dress. It's not just that people came together and said, announcement, all cleavages will not be open at this level. No. But there is a way that those things are happening that become the clear blueprint for conduct. They govern behavior, they govern actions. They are not just happening. Are we on the same page? Yes, Even the way you get angry, the way you do your air, everything is, well, how come all ladies do it the same way? You know? You know when you, maybe you are itching, you just... <laughs> every, every the same way. You know, people get angry, door, people, you know, all those things are just all over the place. The same way. Those things are not just happening. People are pressing buttons and making things happen. Let me tell you something. There are three people in the world. The people you see every time, otherwise called the masses. Then the people you see when they are revealed or when they are appointed, otherwise called CEOs, musicians, celebrities, public office holders, presidents. They are people you see every time. They represent the people you do not see. Sorry, they represent the people you see every time and they control the people you see every time. Then there's the people you do not see at all. They control the people that you see when they are revealed. So there are the people you don't see who control those that you see who represent those that you see every time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And let me tell you something. Look. In this election, get your P P PVC, vote your life there. It's very wise. You have to engage. But also understand that that is what they call secondary commitment. There's a primary commitment that can arrest everything you want to do with your PVC and can, as a matter of fact, define your nuisance, the nuisance value of your PVC in your hand. The, hey, are you here? Because in the primaries, which is party administration, they produce the candidates. If there are three political parties and they have three candidates, and the three candidates are three fools, please, what is the power of your PVC? Zero. Thank you. You will now diligently go and vote the best of three fools. Your vote has been arrested by the options that was delivered to you. So choice is an instrument for manipulation. The power centers who sit at those gates designing blueprints for sin 
are doing so by controlling your options but empowering your choices. So, when slave trade came, what was it doing? It was controlling people. Their due necessary human experience was being controlled. They were being told what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And the human life cannot be manipulated except through a script. If you want to control the human being, it must not be obvious to him. The day he knows you are trying to control him, he will react, protest, rebel, reject everything, and find another cause. So they were controlling the human being and controlling him, telling him what to do, how to do it, when to do it, who to do it with, where to go, where not to go. He found out, he rejected it. The power centers converted slave trade to colonialism. Doing the same thing. Please, I'm not talking of the white man. Right? I'm not talking of anything like that. I'm just defining power dynamics and how it works. So, though he worked in slavery, it, com it became colonialism, doing the same thing, controlling choices, telling us what to do, how to do it, where to do it. Hello? We found out again, we rejected it. Sorry? It became appetite in some environment. Became military government in some environment. Still doing the same thing. What to do, how to do it. Well, we found out, we rejected it, it became democracy. Some environment, uniform men, in civilian included. Doing the same thing. And every time you try to control human beings in a way that is obvious to them, that control has a lifespan, naturally. I don't know if they met, but the power centers at some point said to themselves, we can't continue to function like this. We need to create something that is more sublime such that we can control these people without them knowing and then perpetuate that control. So how do we do that? Mm, how do we do that? Bam. Instead of controlling their choices, sorry, instead of controlling their choices, yes, give them power over the choices. So tell them, don't let anybody choose anything for you. Choose what you want. Vote. It's your power. Your choice is all you've got. Choose what you have. Let nobody manipulate your choice. Let nobody pay for your choice. Let nobody control your choice. Rather die than let any human beings control your choice. Recruit pastors. Recruit imams. Recruit religious leaders. Non-profit leaders. Recruit teachers. Newspapers. Media. Campaign. Tell them about their choice. Remind them of their power to choose. Let nobody control your choice. Die for your choice. Except that while you control your choice, we control the options. So we control how the options emerge. And as long as we control the options, we have arrested your power to choose. So you are waiting for your choice to vote. So voting is an example now. You want to vote, but your vote is only as powerful as the candidates you have. So if you really want to be politically active, please, it's not just in, in getting PVC. You have to join the political party and engage in party administration and be part of all of that process of how the candidates emerge. Because once the candidates emerge, your votes are arrested. Oh, yes, sir. And the candidates emerge based on agenda, preferences, and prejudices. That's right. Am I talking to you? Yes, sir. You now come to come and vote. You are co voting three stupid heads. You are now trying to use a system to define which is most sane. So you are not making a choice between bad and worse. Or bad, worse, and lethal. When you now choose bad, I say, well, bad is now good. So you now give yourself a therapy that convinces yourself that you are okay. Knowing that psychologically you are taking comfort in a manageable madness. <laughs> You are really not being liberated. Your chains have just been loosened. Before, your tight chain can only get you from here to here. But maybe if we choose this guy, our chains are now loosened. We are still in chain, but the chain is now longer. We can go from here to the door. But you are still a slave. Am I speaking in quotes? Of course. But go out there and vote. 
But I speak to you as Christians. Your life is more than democracy. Your life is deeper than capitalism. Your life is bigger, more expanded than any system of government anywhere. You already function under a government. Is your creator, the monarch of the universe, with an economy that is completely parallel to what is going on in the world. Your duty is to know it and your stake in it. What's the color of evil? What kind of car does, does wickedness drive? Let's flip it. What's the color of wisdom? What's the address of understanding? Can you imagine? They said white. Can you imagine? Because it's snow white. Yes, sir. Everything good is white. Everything black is black, black sheep. Black meal. Black, black. So I have a problem. But let's forget that. That's only debate today. Are you with me? Are you sure? In the first session of the first service, I made a very clear understanding that everything you see materially that has weight and occupies space, which is matter, anything you see materially is a physical representation of a metaphysical truth. Everything you see physically is a physical representation or expression of a spiritual truth. Everything. So when you come in contact with something, it is not like you are doing things in the physical to determine your place in the spiritual. Mm -mm. It is that things are being done in the spiritual that is determining your role in the physical. It's the other way around. Just like you are not human beings having spiritual experiences. You are spirit being having human experiences. Your life as a human being is timed. Your life as a spirit being is inelastic. Am I talking to you? So your life doesn't begin when you are born. Oh, there are four dimensions of existence. There is pre-womb existence. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I didn't just know you, I gave you identity. I didn't just give you identity, I gave you a task. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Pre-birth, pre-womb. There is a womb experience. There is a post-womb experience, which you call life. Then there is a post-life experience, which you call eternity. Are we here? Most people start counting their life from post-womb. But the Bible says, teach us to number our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom because all of what we represent is so full, it transcends the limits of what the human mind can capture. Am I talking to you? And once you begin to think like that, you are looking for the spiritual representation of anything physical, your watch, your car, your seat, the camera, the TV, everything physical has a spiritual representation. It is not that it is the physical that is creating the spiritual representation. It is the spiritual perspective that is creating the physical manifestation or the physical representation. Are we on the same page? So the world, however, does not have the spiritual positioning to understand the spiritual perspective of a physical manifestation. So all they can do is to work with what they see, what they can touch, what they can feel, what they can hear. So that's all they can do. So once you deal with matter, the things that have weight and occupy space, when you deal in the tangible realm, you can only ask two questions. What is this thing made of? And how does it work? And that is the guarantee of innovation and invention. It's enough. You don't need the spiritual perspective to continue to produce on earth. By the time you are interested in the spiritual perspective, you are now with an advantage. First, you have the natural right to ask the same question any scientist can ask 
about what is this about what is it made of and how does it work you have the right to do so because you're a human being so there's equality there in the same way there's no seniority in the grave there's no seniority there is the right of all human beings foolish or wise now you then have another advantage in that you can go beyond that to actually see where it began which is the spiritual perspective that the, that, that physical manifestation represents. All right. That's right. All right. So your own questions are now true. What does it mean? And what deeper truth does it embody? So when you see anything, don't stop where the world stops by asking, how does it work? You can go further and say, what does it mean? What does it, what spiritual truth? What deeper truth does it and body does it represent? Are we on the same page? Once you begin to think like that, first of all, you have created your own parallel universe. See those guys at the gates? You have come to the gate yourself. You are now at the gates. They have their own table, you have your own table. You see, evil is a necessary instrument in a flawed system. You can't wish evil away. Without evil, there's no terms of reference for good. It's like you want to define wisdom, but you know nothing about foolishness. You can never be wise. Because that is what understand consequences. Hello? How do you know good if there's no evil? How do you know wisdom if there's no foolishness? Somebody must be foolish for wisdom to continue to have relevance. The moment everybody is wise, Wisdom will be useless. It is the rarity of wisdom that underscores its pursuit. If anything that is common has no value. Have you, have you noticed? Yeah. So people want to be wise because foolishness is more default. You don't need formal training to know how to be foolish. Once you are born, you are in that program. You are not going to walk because you have seen nature. So you, you, no matter how good you are, at best, you are, your nuisance is compartmentalized. Once you are not born again, you can be very wise in the office and still be foolish morally. Because the best you can express is compartmentalized sanity. Your, your foolishness is still resident with you. If we observe you closer, we will see the weight of your nuisance. How much you are contributing to the underdevelopment, disorderliness, and irritation of society. That's nuisance value, by the way. Are we together? I need to run. So part of how that works is that everything that must be usable, transferable, must be seen as children of God from their spiritual perspective. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The world starts their thinking at four, five, six. You have the capacity to start your thinking from zero. That is the energy that created the world, zero to one. So you don't even need contest to create meaning. You can create meaning from zero. So zero is not nothing. Zero is something. And if you want to know that, multiply one million times zero. You see that it will change its number. From one million to zero. So zero is not nothing. There are properties. I can't see. You don't own this place. It belongs to all of us. This is, do you understand? This is empty space. But it's not empty. Because if I bring your phone and I bring your phone, you don't see what is connecting them, but they can be talking. And this phone can be in China, and this one can be in Lagos, and they are not, there's no wire connecting them. But though you can see nothing, there is something. Mm -hmm. So nothing is something operating at a level that cannot meet the limits of the physical senses, but you can take responsibility for it by choice. Mm -hmm. That is why people create inventions, machines, devices, and all of that. Stay with me. But you see those guys at the gate, they are not just pleasuring themselves. They are shaping culture. They are choosing where the budgets go. They are determining. You know, God told me many years ago, because I asked him, why are companies owned by non-Christians spreading, receiving investment, funding, and all of that? Oh, let me expand that. How come Sin gains traction easily. And God told me, one is sweet. But you will not have known its sweetness if it wasn't promoted. If it wasn't promoted, you wouldn't know how sweet it is. If you don't know how sweet it is, you won't pursue it. 
Are we together? And God told me, it's very simple. Those who fund sin spend more money than those who fund the gospel. Those who fund righteousness are too busy calculating whether it's, am I led to give, am I not led? Let, let me pray about it. I'm, I still need to let me pray. These guys don't care. They are sending money out. Send money out. We don't even what are we praying to. You know, it's God that requires loyalty. The devil doesn't. Yeah. You don't need to say, devil is, devil is my master. You don't need to say so. No, you need to say Jesus is Lord. Yeah. But Satan, you can say, Satan, I hate you. No. As long as you don't say, Jesus, I love you, it's, right. Satan is fine. You can say, me, I'm atheist. I don't believe in any God. Satan is correct. In fact, encourage him. Don't believe in anybody. <laughs> he will encourage you. You can say, me, I'm Buddhist. I'm not a Christian. Say, Fantastic. That's why they said the road to heaven is narrow. But they said to hell is wide. Everybody is welcome. Everybody. No matter what you're afraid, you just cross, just don't believe in Christ. Anything you believe in, we are fine. Are you on the same page? Yes, sir. Stay with me. I have 10 minutes more. So, the way it works, guys, very simply, is that you need to take a stake in that space and to understand that things are not just happening. Now, understanding that gives you responsibility. Responsibility now is that what are, you, what are you going to curate yourself? What experience are you guaranteeing for the human condition? You have to ask those big questions. Because future power is about what you can create in the culture that either governs how we love, or governs how we walk, or governs how we play, or governs how we live, or governs how we die. That's culture shaping. How we live, how we love, how we work, how we play, or how we die. Whether it's Google, or social media, or Instagram, or it's Coca-Cola, or it's GM, or Honda, or Mercedes-Benz, or Lego, whatever it is, or computer games, or whatever it is, it's doing one, two, three, or four, or all of the five things. How we live, how we love, how we play, how we work, how we die. Are we together? That's culture shaping. Now that is true at any level. So bringing it home, you begin to see how God to help anybody. Who you must listen to the sentence of the first service because I need to go. Part of that revelation is the idea that if you want to understand God in Romans 1, 18 down that we read, you are not going to understand God by necessarily stretching your neck to heaven. You are going to understand God by studying the things that are made. He said, we've been understood by the things that are made. Now, that is easy for those who don't have God. For those who have God, it should be easier. But sadly, access to the monarch of the universe is indulgence not to search for so many Christians. We so believe in God that we help him to do, we want him to do what he doesn't do. We want him to do what he has delegated. We want him to do what he has no capacity for. Something came to my mind, I cannot say it. But trust me, there are things God cannot do. Hello? Ha, that's not even complex. God cannot lie, first of all. <laughs> are we on the same page? But truth is, there are things God cannot do. God cannot help you brush your teeth. If you are stupid enough to believe God for that, that is your last breath you are using. God cannot help you cough. God cannot love you so much and say, you're so tired, you've been doing crusade for the past four days. Please, Angel Gabriel, help him sleep. No. You have to sleep yourself. And if you don't sleep, God will come and tell you, you need to sleep. You need to sleep. And if you refuse to sleep, you're going to have cardiac arrest or stroke and die. And God will welcome you, foolish but faithful servant. <laughs> Do you get it? Are you sure you get it? So, as I close, and I'm closing for you. <laughs> I'm closing. I told people, I said, when I come to the elevation today, I must finish five minutes before my time ends. No matter what happens. So rise to your feet. In the name of Jesus. No, I'm not done. But rise to your feet. I want to, I want to lock it in three minutes. Listen, guys. Listen, guys. Part of what you must understand is how to position yourself in the world today. And to do that, relationship with God at a level is key. But equal to that 
is understanding the bracket of what God has defined and how you can swim into that. I'm going to zero into that finally in the third service. But, and please go home after this service. Go and watch it online, right? Please don't stay here and cause commission at the car park. But part of it is this, guys. The moment you begin to stretch in the way that I've described and, and all, all, all that I have said, right? Then you realize that your spiritual conditioning of necessity, whether you like it or not, is not complete until you find a physical, understandable, measurable, transferable, usable expression of it. Never find anything in the spirit that cannot have a physical dimension. You are a spiritist from that moment on. You are not spiritual again. Spirituality means one word, connection. The more spiritual you are, the more relatable you become. When you become so spiritual and you cannot convert that spirituality into products, into services, into ideas, into theories, into systems, into structures, you are not spiritual, you are a spiritist. You can't become so spiritual, people cannot talk to you. You are finally moving everywhere, you are not spiritual. The proof of spirituality is connectedness. The culture must fill you. The streets must fill you. The community must fill you. Your environment must fill you. And the objective of that filling is such that your results can unlock their humility and their curiosity to pursue your souls. That's the way it works every time, guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless everyone today. I release you into a new type of consciousness that never again will you look at things ordinarily. That you will seek spiritual understanding and the Holy Ghost is committed, secure, guaranteed to release you insight, revelation for use. So shall it be from today. You see all things. You understand all things. Your eyes are blessed because they see. Your ears are blessed because they hear. To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. People of God, listen to me. If you are here today, please I'm not asking you if you go to church. I'm not asking you if you are in the choir. I'm not asking you if you have a Bible. I'm not asking there's one under your pillow. I'm not asking if you're in the department. I want to ask you, if Jesus come down or you die now, are you going to heaven? Right now. If Jesus shows up now, are you with him? Do you have the visa? That's the question. Answer that question honorably. If your answer is yes, I'm going to ask you to sit down. Don't sit down yet. If your answer is no, probably for the first time in your life, do the truth of your conscience by not caring who is here or who is looking at you and just remain standing. If you are sure that if Jesus comes now, you are going to heaven and that you are in his camp and secured there, then sit down. If you are not, remain standing. Be bold. Don't be afraid. Don't copy anybody. Don't try to look at anybody. Thank you for standing. I see you guys standing. Listen, sincerity is a powerful tool. God will bless you for your sincerity. He will open doors for you. But sincerity is not a factor of production. People are sincerely in jail. People are sincerely poor. People are sincerely raped, sincerely frustrated. Because sincerity is not an independent variable, it's a dependent one. You need to add many other things to sincerity to make it valuable. So one more step, guys. October 25, 1995. I listened to somebody like this. I took this decision in my bedroom. Right? And I'm going to ask you today. Do you want me to pray for you? You want to start your own journey because all that I discuss and all that I will lace on that in the third service and in the fourth service are simply for those who are connected in the kingdom. Be part of us today. Take a step and come out. Let me pray with you. God bless you. Bless you. Please do. Don't be shy. God bless you. Keep clapping. God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sir. Bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yes, yes, yes. We're waiting for you. Please keep coming. Labor Shakayamo Santa Rabasa. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, brother. God bless you, brother. Yes, people. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come quick. Come quick. Run down. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sis. Yes, sis. I see you, bro. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Amen. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels. 
when a soul comes to Christ. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Who is doing that rejoicing? That's God himself. It's not the angels that are rejoicing. It's God that is rejoicing in the presence of the angels, guys. That is the biggest thing you can ever do. We all did it. Pastor Godman did it. I did it. Pastor Bola did it. We all did it at some point. And so I wanted to say this after me. We want to get in touch with you, connect with you, and introduce you to you. The Holy Ghost in the next 30 days will do one job in your life. It will introduce you to you. You will meet you at a level unimaginable in the name of Jesus. Yes, keep coming, keep coming. As you are coming, say after me. Say after me, Heavenly Father. Everybody in the audience join us to say this. Heavenly Father, thank you for saving me. Today, I accept, accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I renounce every commitment that is away from your order. And I accept you into my life newly and fresh. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for the gift of access. I come into power and newness in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for everyone here. We place a demand on the grace of God upon this house and release this one into newness by your grace and by your power in Jesus' mighty name. Before you go, please see that gentleman. You are going to go with him and the counselor. We need your data because we need to reach out to you and connect with you. There's another gentleman there you can also reach out to and the counselor. Follow them and they will sort all of this. So before you follow them, I want to challenge you with something. For some of you here, you've done this before. So what, you, what God wants to do with you is to give you assurance of salvation. Yes. So... We have a faith development class where we teach about the assurance of salvation. And that will cement your decision today and put you on a growth trajectory. It's an online class that I would want you to sign up for. The ministers will direct you on how to do that. Sincerity is not enough. Yes, sir. You follow through by taking the right steps that can draw you closer to God's original intention for your life and that's why i believe god brought you into this service yes so please let's follow the ministers and please make sure you do what they want you to do so you can connect with us at that level that we can use the opportunities that god has given us in this church the gifts of god in this church to put you on the right plane uh, for your spiritual development And if you left your belongings on your chair and you didn't uh, put in charge of anyone, if, if there's somebody there looking after it for you, it's okay. But if you didn't put in charge of anyone, please go pick it and then follow. But if not, please let's follow our ministers right now. Come on, let's appreciate all the bold people making a decision for Jesus. Praise God. I said, praise God. Can you say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I release myself for the fullness of your assignment over my life. I will not be a nuisance in the land of the living. My light will shine brighter and brighter. I will represent you well in my world. I release myself as a culture shaper to shape culture in the name of Jesus. Somebody say it better, amen. amen. Oh, come on, somebody say it better, amen. amen. If there's someone who is still wondering what just happened, you know, uh, this guy said a lot of stuff and, you know, I'm a bit overwhelmed. I want to encourage you to listen to this over and again. The salient truths that you need to appropriately digest. Yeah, that you need to appropriately digest. Uh, but if I will behave like a spiritual parent to this house that I am, uh, to help you, you know, digest some things very well, is that what PK has said is that according to Romans 1 and verse 20 the invisible attributes of God 
can be seen. Yeah. The Bible says, even his, <laughs> uh, his Godhead and eternal power can be understood through the things that are seen. We have been taught in Christianity to keep looking up, looking up to God. And human beings are arranging the earth and reprogramming it and fashioning evil. And according to the scripture I read in Ezekiel, some people are in charge of designing sin. And we as Christians, we're always looking up. And God said, everything I've created is reflecting me to you. Because your spirituality does not gain meaning until it makes impact on the things, physical things that we can touch. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Speaking in tongues, for instance, will, will be of no relevance. If after you have spoken in tongues, you cannot rearrange your word. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. If after you have spoken in tongues, spoken in tongues, you didn't, in speaking in tongues, I should receive wisdom to make my marriage work. My speaking in tongues is useless if my marriage is breaking down and, I'm, and that's the only thing I'm doing. I'm just speaking in tongues. Because spirituality must find relevance in how I connect with other people and how I shine my light in my world. How somebody stay following me. Yeah. And our culture is shaped is as we pay attention to how we live, how we walk, how we play, <laughs> how we love, and how we die. Those five things. Every product that is made in our world today are attached to those five things. Yeah. If you create a car, it's about how we live for mobility and transportation. Yeah. And there are many products on how we love. Yeah, I'm a relationship coach. It's about how we love. I teach people how to love better. <laughs> and so many things that we do in our world today. But that's how we shape culture. And we must change our mind about the Christianity that holds us down to only relating to God and leaving everything here for evil to dominate it and pervade it. And that same evil will knock on our own door if care is not taken, if I is knocking on our door, because divorce in the body of Christ, in developed world where they measure, is now at stripping the people that are not even born again. More Christians are divorcing than people that are not saved. Yeah. It's just that we don't have statistics here, so we don't speak to some of those things. And God will use it to give us the statistics. Or so say amen now, somebody. Yeah. So we can know what we're dealing with and do better. Praise God. I said praise God. Will you celebrate the gift of God in Pastor Kunle Shoreya? Powerful, 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 powerful. Powerful gift of God. I want to encourage all of us to uh, please listen to this over and again. Listen to the first service. It was really very powerful. And also, please listen to this over and again. Um, it will wrap it all up in, in, in the last service. And I believe that when you listen to things like this and you look at your plans for the year and your goals for the year, you should make some adjustment and pay attention to things and areas where it looks like you are not as self-aware as you should be or where you have been playing naive. Because what I sense in my spirit while I was speaking is that there are many things that we pray about that God wants us, God is waiting for us to be able to answer our prayer. Yeah. He wants us to move because there's something we can do in the physical about it. Yeah. Somebody can, you can't be praying for money and you're supposed to start a business and you refuse to start your business. God will supply your need based on your current expression of your gift. Until you give that gift wider expression, maybe from enterprise or career, greater expression, the result or the answer you get is limited to that kind of expression. May God give us wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Or oh, somebody shout a better amen. amen. And one more time, please help me appreciate PK one more time. Powerful, powerful, powerful.